Good afternoon. I call to order the October 24th, 2023 regular meeting of the Minneapolis Heritage Preservation Commission. For the record, my name is Barbara Howard and I serve as chair of the commission. Just a reminder to please silence your cell phones and other electronic devices and be sure to speak clearly into the microphone whether you're giving testimony or you're up here at the dais. Would the clerk please call the rolls so that we may verify the presence of a quorum? Commissioner Bjornberg. Present. Booty. Present. Chair Howard. Present. Malblum. Present. Nystrom. Present. Vice Chair Sandbolt. Present. Aston is absent. Struthers. Present. Van Der Eyck. Here. There are eight members present. Let the record reflect we do have quorum and that Commissioner Maston provided proper notice that she has a conflict this afternoon and her absence is excused. Our first order of business is to adopt the agenda for this meeting. We'll work off the agendas that are available over by the clerk. I'll go through the agenda and sort out which items will be discussed and which ones will be on consent. Item number four, 912 Park Avenue South, Ward 6. This application is for a certificate of appropriateness. Item number four will be on consent unless someone wants to speak in opposition to or modify the staff recommendations. Item number five, 350 and 360 Fifth Street North, 328 and 334 Street North, and 321 Washington Avenue North, Ward 3. This application is for a certificate of appropriateness. Item number five will be on consent unless someone wishes to speak in opposition to or modify the staff recommendation. And finally, item number six, 101 Grant Street East, Ward 7. This application is also for a certificate of appropriateness. Item number six will be discussed. So the proposed agenda, the consent agenda will include the following two items. Item number four, 912 Park Avenue South, Ward 6, item number 5, 350 and 365th Street North, 328 and 334 Street North, and 321 Washington Avenue North, Ward 3. Is there any opposition from commissioners to staff recommendations for these two items? Is there anyone in the public that wishes to speak in opposition to those two items? Hearing no opposition to placing those two items on consent, we will approve those consent items in one motion at the start of the meeting. Item number six will have staff presentation, public comment, and commission discussion and action. And item number six is 101 Grant Street East, Ward 7. Commissioners may have a motion to appro approve the proposed agenda. So moved. Thank you, Commissioner Struthers. Is there a second? Nice from seconds. Thank you, Commissioner Nystrom. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. Any abstentions? The agenda is approved. We have two sets of minutes to approve today, starting with the minutes from our September 26th, 2023 meeting. May I have a motion to approve those minutes? Nystrom, so moves. Thank you, Commissioner Nystrom. Is there a second? Sandbolt seconds. Thank you, Vice Chair Sandbolt. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed say nay. Any abstentions? Minutes are approved. We also need to approve the minutes from our October 5th, 2023 special meeting. May I have a motion to approve those minutes? Sambolt, so moved. Thank you, Vice Chair Sambolt. Is there a second? Melbourne seconds. <laughs> Thank you, Commissioner Booty. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed say nay. Any abstentions? Nystrom abstains. Sorry, I meant aye. <laughs> <laughs> I believe you oh, meant to say you're abstaining. I do abstain. Yeah. You're right. You're right. <laughs> Commissioners <laughs> Van der Eyck and Nystrom abstain, but the minutes, <laughs> the minutes are approved. Before I begin the hearing, oh, before I open the hearing to public comments, let me summarize the process for conducting a public hearing. First, we'll act on the consent agenda items that we just set. Once those items on consent agenda are approved, the commission is done with those items. Applicants may contact the planning staff tomorrow about the next steps in the process. 
After the consent agenda items are approved, we'll take any remaining agenda items in order. Planning staff will present its report, then commissioners will ask questions of staff, and then I'll open the public hearing and we'll hear from the applicant and commissioners may ask questions of the applicant. After that, we open it up for other public comment. If you wish to speak, you need to do two things. First, you have to sign up in the uh, sheet over by the clerk, and if you haven't done this already, you can do so afterwards. Uh, when you come up to testify, you must state your name and your address for the record, and please keep your comments specific to the application that's before us today. If you have any materials to hand out, be sure to give those to our committee clerk as well so that they can be distributed to the commission and entered into the public record. Do not approach the commissioners on the dais. After the public comments are complete, I'll close the hearing and that's when commissioners will deliberate and act on the applications before us. I will now open the public hearing on the consent agenda items. This is item number four, 912 Park Avenue South, Ward 6, item number five, 350 and 360 5th Street North, 328 and 334 Street North, and 321 Washington Avenue North, that's in Ward 3. Again, do any commissioners oppose the staff recommendations for these two items? Are there any members of the public who oppose the staff recommendation for these two items? Seeing none, I will now close the public hearing on the consent agenda items. May I have a motion to approve the staff findings and recommendations? Nystrom, so moves. Thank you, Commissioner Nystrom. Is there a second? Bjornberg seconds. Thank you, Commissioner Bjornberg. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed say nay. Any abstentions? Those items are approved as recommended by staff on the agenda. Applicants can contact planning staff about next steps. So our next item, item number 6, 101 Grant Street East, Ward 7. This application is for a certificate of appropriateness. The staff report is presented by Rob Skalecki. Thank you, Chair Howard, and good afternoon, Commissioners. My name is Rob Skalecki, Senior City Planner in the Historic Preservation Section of CPED. Today, I'm presenting a Certificate of Appropriateness for the property at 101 Grant Street, um, the Wesley United Methodist Church. This is for um, changes to masonry, as well as just a re-roof of the, pro uh, the property. The subject property is the Wesley United Methodist Church, a masonry church with a Sunday school wing designed by master architect Warren H. Hayes in the Richardsonian Romanesque style with Byzantine influences. The building started its planning and construction in 1890, and it was completed and dedicated in 1892. The church's exterior uses a unique blend of masonry implementation that's not commonly found in Minneapolis. The church is clad in prep primarily in Sioux Falls Jasper, accented by Superior Potsdam Sandstone. Um, and this includes, uh, the building includes Lake Superior Granite at its foundation and base. Red brick is also utilized uh, as a principal material on the non-primary elevations, which are south and east. Warren Howard Hayes is regarded as a nationally significant architect for his pioneering use of the Akron plan and diagonal sloped church auditoriums. Hayes designed the building with a total seating capacity of 2,200 when schoolrooms were open to the auditorium. The interior of the church is recognized as a landmark for its diagonal Akron floor plan with intact decorative features including stained glass uh, and a stained glass floral pattern dome. The interior is also recognized for its use of several innovative mechanical and structural systems including an early use of reinforced laminated panels in the dome and electric features like lighting and fans um, that circulated warm air and cool air throughout the structure via the furnace and ice room. Um, the property is an interior landmark, but there are no interior alterations planned as part of this uh, application submission. The applicant is proposing the following exterior alterations. The removal of an estimated six and a half feet of brick and sandstone at the lattice pattern of the taller section of the um, remaining historic chimney structure on the south, which is the rear elevation. Um, so this is noted as chimney A in the applicant's plans. 
Approximately four and a half feet of the second masonry lattice chimney noted as chimney B, which is part of the same structure as chimney A, uh, will also be removed. And the applicant states that the chimney removals in both these locations would be unnoticed and make the structures safer to maintain in the long term. A new penetration will be made at the chimney's north elevation to accommodate approximately 40 by 60 inch air supply grill on that side, and this would not be easily visible from the public right away. Contemporary metal flashing, parapet caps, and scuppers will be added to the newly created parapets uh, where the chimneys had been. And standard brick tuck pointing and rehabilitation work uh, was detailed in the staff report and will take place uh, once the portions are demolished. The applicant does believe that reconstruction and structural support of the current lattice system would be more costly to complete. And the applicant has submitted sufficient photo evidence of the interior chimney as well as the exterior components to show that there is very substantial brick deterioration here. Um, the present features, however, are historic and have served, appear to have served the ground floor boiler room of the church. Historic photo evidence does suggest that other chimney structures um, have been removed on the property. So here you can see the, the current photo um, with the current structure in, in kind of green box, um, and then various levels of different eras of the historic chimneys located at that uh, south, which is the rear elevation um, of those. This is the only remaining one that has that same sort of design or any historic design on the south elevation. The applicant is also proposing to uh, cut and remove deteriorated sandstone parapets with triangle openings that exist atop the Northwest Tower's arched corbel tables on all four sides. Uh, so here you can see the proposed east side uh, work and then all four sides were of course included um, with the application materials and in the staff report. An EFIS, exterior insulation finishing system or stucco system with color to match the existing sandstone is planned to be installed in place of this uh, sandstone that will be removed using sheathing and structural steel studs. The existing stone in this location includes single stone blocks with those hollow triangle motifs cut into each block. And the applicant has shown that the design is deteriorated to a point that replacement may be considered. Um, so you can see some of that here in the applicant submitted photos. The exposed sandstone here shows deterioration that's expected for unmaintained sandstone in a tower parapet with triangular openings like this that has allowed for weathering and moisture infiltration for over 130 years. Um, the corbel tables seen under um, supporting the parapets are planned to remain and be re rehabilitated be rehabilitated by the applicant and treated with hardening and cleaning products that the applicant had previously used and were previously approved on the church elevation masonry repairs. Um, so with that being said, as noted in the staff report, CBED staff have worked with the applicants over the past three years to approve masonry rehabilitation work on primary elevations. And then there was a um, revision that was accepted to that to uh, allow for treatment to the rear just earlier this year. And the last thing as part of the scope of work is an in-kind re-roof that is planned to replace the existing non-historic roof system and asphalt shingles. So the new system will include new asphalt composite shingles and reuse existing metal features where possible. Um, and new flashing and gutter systems are anticipated, which is pretty common for a non-historic re-roof. With that, the Department of Community Planning and Economic Development has analyzed the application to repair and replace masonry and roof features at the Wesley United Methodist Church an individual historic landmark located at 101 Grant Street East based on the following findings. Um, and I will focus simply on the Secretary of the Interior Standards findings since this landmark does not have its own individual um, design guidelines. So staff believes the proposed alterations are consistent with the Secretary of the, Secretary of the Interior Standards uh, with staff conditions of approval. So the project will meet standard two since the lattice masonry chimney and sandstone parapets on the tower are considered character defining elements of the original masonry church design. As conditioned, the project will reuse in-kind masonry materials for select replacement and reconstruction work that will retain the building's materials and design integrity. Understanding that contemporary superior or Potsdam sandstone um, with the same appearance to that as on the building, 
may not be feasibly attainable. Staff has a condition that the replacement sandstone be stone, cast stone, or fiber reinforced concrete. And these recommendations are consistent with the National Park Service Preservation Brief Number 16 for the use of substitute materials on historic buildings. The applicant has shown that the removal and replacement of the identified tower sandstone parapets and rear uh, south elevation chimneys is warranted due to deterioration beyond repair. However, staff has conditioned that these materials be replaced in kind where possible to meet standards five and six. Where sandstone is deteriorated beyond repair and cannot be retained or reused, the applicant shall work with staff to determine the appropriate replacement materials that may be stone, cast stone, or fiber-reinforced fiber concrete system. Stucco and EFIS are not considered appropriate materials to use in place of sandstone when replacing deteriorated historic masonry features. Um, on a landmark that is significant in part for its masonry design. And I will note too that EFIS in particular is not recognized as a durable material for use on any buildings in the city of Minneapolis currently. While the applicant has demonstrated that the, that the brick chimneys are deteriorated to a significant degree, the demolition of these features without reconstruction would detract from the building's historic integrity and leave the building without any of its original chimneys on that elevation. Um, staff has continued, um, staff has, has conditioned, excuse me, that the reconstructed um, chimneys use in-kind material where possible um, and based on physical evidence of the chimney's construction um, to meet standard six. So staff has also conditioned that cleaning only take place where necessary and that low pressure washing be used to meet standard seven. So with that, the Department of Community Planning and Economic Development recommends that the Heritage Preservation Commission adopt staff findings for the Certificate of Appropriateness Application by Dennis Batty of Dennis Batty and Associates Groups, Group Architects on behalf of Substance Church to repair and replace masonry at the roof features at the Wesley United Methodist Church, an individual historic landmark located at 101 Grand Street East. And staff recommends that the Heritage Preservation Commission approves the Certificate of Appropriateness based on the following findings. Number one, the church's only remaining lattice masonry chimneys shall be reconstructed using in-kind materials following their removal. Other stone, cast stone, or fiber reinforced concrete may be considered in place of sandstone if similar contemporary stone cannot be sourced. Number two, EFIS shall not be used to reconstruct deteriorated beyond repair features of the building's tower parapets and again stone cast stone or fiber reinforced concrete shall be used to replace deteriorated sandstone that cannot be repaired and the applicant shall work with staff to determine the appropriate replacement material. Number three, missing sandstone features replicated with the Edison Coatings Custom System 45 shall match the profile and the appearance of the equivalent decorative sandstone features. Proposed stone patching shall match the historic profile and only be done in locations where necessary. Condition number four, new mortar shall be type o, o mortar to remain softer in composition. Condition number five, new mortar joints shall match the profile of existing. Condition number six, only areas of sandstone experiencing significant residue buildup, which may lead to future deterioration if not mitigated, shall be cleaned. Full cleaning of elevations is not approved. Proposed cleaning shall be done in select locations using the gentlest mean avail means available, and high pressure wash blasting is not approved. Um, and number seven, metal roofing materials shall be repair, uh, retained and repaired where feasible and replaced in kind only where necessary. Um, and conditions number eight and nine are standard conditions of approval for a certificate of appropriateness. Um, but with that, I'm available as staff to take any questions that commissioners may have. Thank you. Thank you for the report. Commissioners, other questions for staff? I don't see any. I will now open the public hearing for this item. I understand the applicant's here. Would you like to speak? Be sure to state your name and address for the record. Uh, <clears throat> my name is Nathan Buss, 101 East Grant Street. I'm a representative for Substance Church. Just want to thank the commission for um, taking the time to hear our application, and uh, thank you for keeping our historic properties uh, to historic uh, specifications in the city. So with that, I'll invite Mike uh, from Dennis Batty and Associates to provide further information and answer questions better than I can. So thank you. Great.
Thank you, Nate. My name is Michael Batty. I'm project manager at Dennis Batty and Associates Architects. We've been hired by Substance Church to be involved in the restoration repairs on this building. Um, I guess I'd just like to start off by saying our goals were to basically make the building safe while respecting the integrity, the historic integrity of the, of the exterior of the building as well as the interior with the original project. Um, some of these conditions we've been made aware of as the first restoration project progressed back in 2020. Um, and um, basically discovered that some of the materials just aren't holding up over time. You know, this is a very old building. And so our goal was, can we find modern materials, modern methods, modern design that still respects the historic nature of the building and solves the problems that the owner is currently facing with the building. Um, in the case of the chimneys, um, they're really not, while they are part of the historic nature of the building, um, they are not currently serving the purpose that they were originally intended for. Um, with the open, the open nature, let's just say, of the lattice design of both of the chimneys, water and pigeon feces are basically collecting in the bottom of those chimneys. Um, so there's a couple reasons right there why we kind of took the approach basically that we did. Um, and then the very just unstable nature that, that those chimneys are both in at this time um, kind of directed us down the path of, can we close this off and provide an HVAC duct um, for the air intake that was added as part of the 2017 um, HVAC, system, HVAC system that was added to the building. Um, so we're basically trying to kind of reconcile a lot of things here, reconcile the new things that have been added back in 2017 and then um, still respect the character of the building. Um, we also felt like because these chimneys are on the south side, the south elevation of the building, um, it's, it's not like they're front and center, you know, the main entrance to the building, um, the two main um, elevations are the north and the west elevations of the building that are highly visible from the public side, you could say, um, of the street. Um, so we felt like this was a minimal solution, minimal um, problem that we were solving. Um, still trying to respect the character of the building and use similar materials to repair the situation while keeping water and pigeon feces out of the chimney spaces. Um, so moving on to the parapets. Um, basically all four parapets have the same problem. Um, they're composed of the sandstone that while at the time it was built probably was an amazing feat of engineering, um, 100 plus years later, um, time has basically worn this down to the point where it's, especially the top part where the triangles are, um, it's worn down to the point where it just can't be restored, it can't be hardened. Um, you, you can see from the photographic evidence that there are gaps that you can stick your fingers in between and it's, it's on the edge of having some very large pieces of sandstone come down on the public sidewalk. So the owner's been very concerned about taking the time to repair this correctly and make it a safe structure, which is our goal as well. Um, so I would say all four um, elevations of the main tower are in similar condition. Um, the south parapet did have a white substance put over it prior, it was probably prior to it being a historic, um, designated a historic structure. Um, we don't know when that was applied to the south parapet, um, but that was kind of a band-aid fix that the original owner, um, the Methodist church, um, basically applied to that south elevation. Um, so that explains the white appearance of that, of the inside of that parapet. Uh, so 
We chose EFIS. Um, didn't understand that Minneapolis has no EFIS basically in the buildings that are here downtown. Um, we do have examples of architecture that we've designed that have been up for 40 plus years and are still in great condition. Um, but we have no argument um, with the council about using a different material um, for repairing the parapets. Um, we do feel like it does need to be lightweight um, because there is some slight separation occurring um, the photographs that I took and in the close observation that I, that I did while I was up there on the top of the tower, um, you can see that the sandstone is starting to gradually pull away from the face of the granite. And so the whole goal in our approach with the EFIS was to use lightweight materials so that something that would stand up for a relatively long period of time and then also not contribute to the weight problem that the sandstone is presenting um, to the problem that we're facing. Uh, so, moving on to the roof. Um, basically tried to take the approach of, we wanna just duplicate what was done previously. Um, the roof was redone prior to substance owning the building. And so the information that we've provided in our specifications, as well as all the notes that we put on the roof plan, are trying to respect what occurred um, with that first um, repair that occurred just before Substance took ownership of the building. So we've tried to mimic the same shingle type, um, tried to call out that we want in-kind materials as far as all the flashing, um, any visual related item that's tied in with the roof. Um, we want to respect what is there and make it look like what is there. And I think, and, and, and then I guess the last thing I would say is that we've tried to also follow the pre-approved processes that we had back in 2020 with the first restoration project of the exterior of the building. Um, we wanna, don't wanna use high pressure washing. Um, we wanna use approved cleaning methods. Um, and cleaning actually brings up a good point. Um, I noticed in the list of recommendations that um, it was stated that they only want partial cleaning of kind of the bad areas of, of the building. And I'm, I, I, we would recommend that that probably not be the case because if you partially wash a building, you're going to see the part that was cleaned and you're gonna see the part that wasn't cleaned. And there's gonna be a noticeable coloration difference there. Um, there's photographic examples of that um, in my collection of visual samples um, that show kind of before and after um, images of what cleaning and patching does for the edifice. So if that were to be done partially, you know, or in sections, you're gonna see sections and partiality in the coloration of those surfaces. So I guess that would be the last thing I would have to say at this point. Thank you for those comments. Yep. Uh, commissioners, are there any questions for the applicant? I guess my question for you is uh, of the conditions that staff has have written, it sounds to me as though the ones you're most concerned about are the chimney ones, so that's condition one, and then you just mentioned the cleaning condition number six. Are there other conditions that you are not, um, or that you are concerned about? Um, I think we're happy to comply, and I think we agree with basically everything else. Yeah. That way we can focus our... Wrong. Okay. That way we can focus our discussion on one sure. and six, if that makes sense. Yep. Uh, any other questions? I don't see any. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other members of the public who wish to speak for or against this application? Seeing none, I'll close the public hearing. Commissioners, let's discuss. Sandstone. The joy of sandstone in Minnesota. <laughs> <laughs> Commissioner.
Commissioner Melba. Thank you, Chair Howard. Um, I am kind of curious about the, the restriction of cleaning only to certain areas. If the cleaning method is done carefully and modestly, I'm not sure that that should be something that should be restricted only to portions because I agree with the applicant that it would visually be nicer looking to have the whole building cleaned. Um, I don't know if uh, potentially you could ask um, staff to talk more about the cleaning recommendation. Would staff be willing to talk a little bit more about the cleaning recommendation? Definitely. Thanks, Chair Howard, Commissioner yes. Melbloom. Um, the staff recommendation there, which actually was has been the same recommendation used in the past administrative reviews with the applicant, um, it's based in the Secretary of the Interior Standards for Rehabilitation for Masonry. Um, so you're correct. You know, there's there's kind of a point where deterioration is causing damage to a building or may cause damage to a building if not treated. But there's also a point where treating deteriorate, or sorry, treating, um, cleaning, I should say, cleaning masonry, um, if not necessarily needed, could lead to more damage. Um, so that condition was written to try to allow the applicant to do that and work with staff. Um, and that has been the case administratively, so you've seen kind of examples of cleaning that have been done. Um, so that was kind of left to the applicant to determine on site which what needed to be cleaned and what didn't. Madam Chair, may I ask a follow-up question? So, Mr. Sklucky, are there ways that the applicant could clean the non-distressed looking areas that would be compliant with the preservation of the building? I think definitely, uh, Commissioner Melblum. I think, you know, they've, they've shown that they've been able to clean the building um, using gentle methods recently. Um, so again, that condition was written with that in mind, um, just letting the applicant know that, that that can continue to carry out provided that it's, it's warranted, provided that there's evidence to show that it, it should be cleaned. Thank you. Thank you. You know, when it comes to, to cleaning buildings, we always, uh, a, lot of, a lot of people want it to look nice and pretty and clean, but when it comes to the older buildings, it can cause more damage than, um, than, it's, than it's worth. And I kind of like the patina that uh, buildings gain over time, um, but it can cause deterioration. So I, I tend to agree with staff on this. Uh, finding as it's written, or this condition as it's written. Other commissioners, thoughts on that or anything else? Commissioner Bjornberg. Yeah, I, I'll just sort of agree with that. Um, I think it is also helpful to hear from staff that this is a condition that has been placed on previous um, applications and it sounds like has been successful so far. So. Um, I think that I'd support it as written. Thank you, thank you, Commissioner Bjornberg. Uh, other thoughts? What about those chimneys? Or any other thoughts on the cleaning? Commissioner Bjornberg, you're still ready. I'm like, Go why ahead. not? Um, I think that the, the chimneys is a tough uh, part for me, especially because um, understanding that that is sort of the, the last chimney standing um, makes it a lot harder to sort of um, talk about uh, complete removal and, and not replacement. Um, so I would say that from my perspective, um, I really support all of the conditions as written. <laughs> Thank you, Commissioner Bjornberg. Other thoughts? Is your flag still up? No? Yeah, I feel the same way about the chimney. Um, you know, it's in the back of the building, and often we give more um, lenient, you know, it, leniency. Is that the right word in the back? Unfortunately, you know, when, it, when we have a building that is landmarked for its architecture, and it is a very distinct chimney like that, it's really hard to, um, to say 
it's insignificant. It's, it, it is significant in this, this case. I tend to agree with staff on that finding as well. Other thoughts or any motions? Commissioner Nystrom, you're reaching. Sorry, couldn't hit the button. <clears throat> I, I agree with um, Commissioner Bjornberg and would make a motion to um, approve the certificate of appropriateness to repair and replace masonry and roof features at Wesley United Methodist Church and Visual Historic Landmark at 101 Grant Street East um, can, as written by staff. So I don't have to read all seven, is that right? Correct. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Commissioner Nystrom. Is there a second? Bjornberg seconds. Thank you, Commissioner Bjornberg. Any further discussion? Seeing none, would we please have the roll? Commissioner Bjornberg. Aye. Udi. Aye. Chair Howard. Aye. Malblom. Aye. Nystrom. Aye. Vice Chair Sandbolt. Aye. Struthers. Aye. Van der Eyck. Aye. There are eight ayes. Thank you, that motion passes, and I should have said this before, but I wanna thank you for all the work that you are doing on the building. It's my old neighborhood, and it's a really important building. Um, thank you for everything you are doing. I know it's not easy. Our, I'm afraid we're still in the middle of our meeting, so you can ask staff tomorrow, maybe. Uh, this concludes our public hearing items. Uh, do commissioners or staff have any announcements or commission business to discuss? Good evening, Andrea Burke, supervisor for the Historic Preservation Team. Um, I do have a few announcements actually to make, uh, excuse me, updates. Um, the application from the September 26th meeting on Emerson Avenue in the Lynnhurst Historic District was appealed, and that was heard this afternoon at the Biz Committee, and that appeal was granted. So I like to give updates on the outcome of those, but that will next go to the City Council for, for final approval. There is no November 6th meeting. Uh, we had no noticed items, um, so that meeting has now been canceled. The next scheduled meeting for the HPC will be November 28th. Um, and then you will be, um, with some of the changes in council calendars, um, I will be bringing a, um, I will bring a calendar to you at that meeting as well for uh, for adoption for January and February HPC meetings. Um, I will send it to you beforehand to be able to get it on your calendars. Um, just some of the meeting dates uh, will be a little different, but, um, but letting you know that instead of uh, approving a full calendar for the year that we normally do, given some of the changes that are um, to potentially be happening in council with some of the calendars and stuff, um, it's gonna be a little different this year in how we, how we adopt. So you'll adopt something for January and February, and then once we are able to put together the calendar for the rest of the year, that will come through as well. But you will get a heads up for January and February. Um, and then also just the final announcement, um, open appointments ends October 31st, it's not October 30th. We do have um, all of our uh, reappointed commissioners um, have chosen not to seek reappointment, and so we do have a good number of openings available on the commission. So I encourage you to recruit if you know anybody who would be interested in sitting on the HPC. Um, please reach out. Uh, we could use um, applications, and we have it there open for about another week. So that concludes my announcements. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Any other announcements? Commissioner Bjornberg? Uh, the planning for the 2024 uh, preservation awards um, ha will be starting this week. Um, if anyone is interested in taking my spot, you can have it. I'm happy to help out again. Um, but I will, in partnership with Mr. Sklecki, uh, be recruiting eventually for jury members for that. So heads up. Long time coming though. <laughs> That's it. Excellent. Um, I love the preservation awards. <laughs> Any other announcements? 
Seeing none, with that, we have completed all the items on our agenda for this meeting. I'll ask members and staff one more time if there are any other matters that need to come before the commission. There being no other business to come before this meeting, without objection, I'll declare the meeting adjourned. Our next regular meeting of the Heritage Preservation Commission will be November 28th, 2023. Thank you all.